wanted to ask you about the Society of St. Pius X. I know that you were a visitator to them on behalf of a pontifical commission, um, have had dialogue with them. Um, what is the current status of the SSPX in the church? And are faithful Catholics allowed to attend SSPX masses, especially those who uh, desire the more traditional um, liturgy, the extraordinary form? Well, basically, the problem, the existence of the Society of Pius X, is that they exist because of the crisis of the Church. If we would not have the, the doctrinal liturgical crisis after the Council, there would no the Society of Pius X, no necessity. Because, uh, and especially the Mass, Archbishop Lefebvre always stated as this is the reason of existence, raison d'etre, of the Society of Pisces is the mass to, to preserve, to hand over this treasure of the, of the perennial liturgy of the Church to the next generations because of the intrinsic weakness and ambig ambiguity of the Novus Ordo, which contains some elements of protestantizing elements you cannot deny this and this was the first and basic reason of archbishop lefebvre the holy mass the traditional mass and and thanks to him to his foundation and work not exclusively i would say of archbishop lefebvre but mainly him uh, we have now the traditional Latin Mass, and Pope Benedict could extend this to the entire Church. Unfortunately, now Pope Francis will again limited it, but it is probably only a temporal measure. And then, simply to guarantee the the pure uh, um, formation of priests, as it was until the Council, simply the same way. Theologically and doctrinally and liturgically, at least to have this possibility to keep this formation as also a kind of treasure in the church. Because there are in the council some affirmations which are still to be clarified, which are not so easy. And with the official, some explanations are not satisfactory. We have to go to the depth of this. And so I think that globally spoken, the Society of Pius X is a work of the providence of God, also from this point of view of doctrine, to in the future, to make a contribution, to clarify really this aspects which must be clarified in doctrine still. Not, they are not plain heresies, but unclear, not clear, ambiguous. But we have to have clarity in the church. We cannot continue with ambiguity. ambiguity. In any case, this is for me the, the basic intentions of the work of Archbishop Lefebvre. And also, he always uh, rejected any sedevacantist tendencies. Even he expelled from the society priests who did not recognize the popes in Rome, Paul VI or uh, John Paul II. And until the end of his life, especially when he consecrated the bishops, uh, he tried to to get the approval of the Pope until the last. He wrote letters and implored the Pope that he wanted to do this with his blessing. This also manifests that he has a true sense of the Church and did this only as a measure of the how do you say extraordinary situation and emergency situation. And then, and now concreted to your question, Pope Francis in some way improved 
the situation in the church of the Society of Pius X in the sense that he granted them the usual ordinary faculties to hear confession to all the priests of the society. This is a very important uh, step to normalize the Society of Pius X and then also to grant the possibility to assist weddings, uh, marriages, canonical assistance, with the possibility to celebrate the nuptial mass. So, the, consequently, also Pope Francis allowed the priests of the Society of Pius to publicly celebrate the nuptial mass. So, in some way, the nuptial mass at least is approved by the Pope. <laughs> and, this, and therefore, it remains a uh, something contradictory. Therefore, I ask the Holy See that they grant the, the priest of the society the the permission, general permission, to celebrate mass, to make this permission. Because when he celebrates the nuptial mass, it's okay; he's approved. But next day, his mass is not approved. This is a kind of contradiction. Yeah. And I ask the Holy See to. To regularize this, and to, but it's not yet. Maybe in the future or in the near future, I would say, I would hope this that they will get a regularization simply because they are doing nothing else. What the church did until the council, and what the church did until the council was not wrong. <laughs> the contrary, it was meritorious, and so they do nothing else. Only this, I say the problem is more the juridical aspect, but also psychologically, I wish them that they must be regularized and integrated in the life of the church from the canonical point of view in order to avoid a kind of mentality of self sufficiency or ghetto mentality. This is also a, a basic uh, consequence. Of to live too long, autonom autonomous, in some way. I hope that this could be resolved. But when people have no other possibilities to go to traditional mass, of course they can go to the Society of Pius X's mass. They are valid, and they are not schismatic because there are some statements of the Holy See where is stated that the Society of Pius X is not schismatic. We have this. And so, even when, let us say, people got their conversion to Catholicism or to a new Catholic life in the co communities or parishes of the Society of Pius X and grew up there, it is logical that they have to the right to continue their deformation and the church life. We have to be here very white uh, and pastoral in these cases because there is no heresy. There is they pray for the Pope even publicly, for the bishop of the diocese, they pray. This is already good. We have not to to be in this situation which we are living, such an extreme emergency situation, to put the letter of the law above all. No. The letter of the law is, in this case, secondary. And, this is, and the purity of the faith and the liturgy and the salvation of souls uh, provided in unity. They are united in the in the mass with the Pope and the bishop, which are they are. They are praying for them, and recognizing him, must be sufficient. And to unite all the good forces and also the other communities of traditional Latin mass, together with the Society of Pius Tans and all the other good Catholics, we must unite. We cannot continue to to. Antagonize it is completely against, uh, I would say, the good of the church and the renewal of the church. We must abandon this unnecessary um, antagonisms and 
look beyond these to this to the great benefit and good of the church of the renewal of the church in this time of extraordinary unprecedented crisis and work together uh, for the for the holy church 